Hey there, y'all. Today we're going to look at 3.1 on solving one-step inequalities. In this unit, as you can kind of see off to the right side on the edge here, we've got five sections in this unit where we're going to look at writing and solving different types of inequalities and eventually getting to compound inequalities at the end of this unit. And so in this first section, we're looking at just one-step inequalities. And so our objective is to be able to solve one-step inequalities using addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. And this falls under our standard of solving linear inequalities in one variable, including equations with coefficients represented by letters. And so we first need to remind ourselves of these five symbols. And so we know what the equal sign does. It tells us that one thing is the same as another. But with these five symbols, we're talking about an inequality. And so the first symbol, remember, think about the directions we're in, and we read from left to right. And so this first symbol is saying that the first thing is going to be bigger than the second. And so this is the greater than symbol. And that's the way to remember these symbols is that we're reading left to right. And, and I know some of your middle school teachers might have said, hey, remember the alligator mouth, right? And, and that's a good way to kind of remember it. But just remember that we read from left to right and the, the opening is always towards the larger item. And so we read in that order. When we go to the second symbol, it's pointing the other direction. So if we have A and then this symbol, then B, the A is smaller than B, so this is A is less than B. And again, we read from left to right, so we're comparing from left to right. The next two symbols are like the first two, where we have the symbol, but there's also a line underneath. And remember that that line underneath on both of these mean equal to. And so when we read the statement A, is greater than or equal to B. And that's how we say it, greater than or equal to. And then finally, or the next one, with the less than symbol, so A is less than or equal to B, so less than or equal to. And finally, the last symbol, one you might have seen before, but if not, it's an equal sign with it cross through. Well, if we cross through something, it means it, that it's not that. And so this symbol literally means that A is not equal to B. And so it is not equal. And so what that means is that the value of A could be anything other than the value of B. And we'll see how that's graphed here in a minute in one of the examples. And so we've got a couple examples here. We'll look at how to graph them and how to solve them. So let's go ahead and look at those. So first we want to look at how do we graph inequalities? Well, if the symbol has the equal to bar underneath, which we talked about above, right, that equal to bar, then we're going to use a closed filled in circle at the critical value. And we talk about critical values, like when we look at example A or example B, the critical value is what we're comparing the variable to. If the symbol does not have the equal to bar, then we're going to use an open or not filled in circle. So here we would see a dot, and here we would see a circle. Okay, And so we're going to look at some examples and look at how to graph. Now, some of your previous teachers might have told you to draw a number line with a whole bunch of tick marks. We don't need that. All we need is what is critical to know what's happening. And so like when we look at x is greater than 8, I'm going to draw just a short number line, and I'm going to put 8 in the middle of it. Now, what's to the left of 8? 7. And so we'll put 7 over here. And to the right of 8 is 9. That's all I need to see for this graph. We're going to put our circle or dot. We're going to put where the shading is. But in the end, that's all I need to see because the number line is going to continue the rest of the way with that information. And so drawing this in, at 8, I'm going to put either the circle or dot because that's my critical value. Again, this critical value is going to be the middle, and it's where we put that circle or dot. And so in this case, it's greater than, and so I'm just going to put a circle at 8 because it's not equal to. Now, again, your previous teachers might have told you to, if it goes this way or goes this way in certain rules, I want you to get away from those rules and actually think about the values. We've got two values to the left and right of 8. Is 7 greater than 8, or is 9 greater than 8? 
Well, 9 is greater than 8. Again, just think as you're saying that statement, which one actually makes sense? 9 is greater than 8. And so that is what we're going to shade towards. We're going to shade towards 9, and we're going to continue and arrow in that arrowhead. And so we are, this is what our graph is going to look like. Let's look at example B. X less than or equal to negative 5. So again, we're going to draw our number line. In the middle of that number line is going to be our critical value. Our critical value is negative 5. And so negative 5 will be in the middle. To the left of negative 5, remember, in the negative. So going to the left means our negative numbers are getting bigger, right? And so negative 6 is to the left of negative 5, and then negative 7, and then negative 8, and then negative 9, and so on, right? So this is negative 6 here, and to the right of negative 5 is negative 4. And so at negative 5, we see we've got that equal 2 bar, so we're going to put a dot. And then again, ask yourself, which one makes sense? Is negative 6 less than negative 5? Or is negative 4 less than negative 5? And remember, we're dealing with negatives here. And so we've got to think about everything being flipped, right? A negative number means that the larger the number is, the less that it actually is. It's further to the left on the number line. And so our shading will go towards negative 6 because that is less than negative 5. So let's look at C. I want you to try C and D, or try C on your own because D we'll talk about in a second. So I want you to pause the video right here Graph up C, take a second, graph it, and then we'll look at the answer. So pause the video now. All right, did you pause the video? Did you actually pause the video? Well, if you haven't, do it now. So with this example, what we're going to look at, let's draw our number line. And so our number line, our critical value is negative 10. To the left of negative 10 is negative 11. To the right of negative 10 is negative 9. And so at negative 10, we're going to put a circle because there's no equal to bar here. It doesn't matter which way that inequality symbol is going, if it's greater than or if it's less than. If there's no equal to bar, it's a circle. If there's an equal to bar, we put a dot and we fill it in. All right. So we're comparing to negative 10 here. So negative 11 or negative 9, which one is greater than negative 10? Again, we're dealing with negatives, so the closer we get to zero, the larger the number actually is. And so negative 9 is larger than negative 10. And so our shading will reflect that. Our last example here in example 1 is x is not equal to 4. And so again, we're going to draw our number line like we've done in the previous problems. And we're going to have 4 as our critical value. Well, 3 is to the left of that, 5 is to the right of that. And so at 4, we cannot be equal to 4. But 3 is not equal to 4, and 5 is not equal to 4, so those work, right? So I could be all this, and I could be all this. But at 4, I cannot be 4. And so the way we represent that is with that circle. And that's why, again, going back to what we've looked at with the previous examples, if there's no equal to bar, we put a what? A circle because what that means is that I cannot be that value but I can be the value right next to it so like when we talk about the example a and where X is greater than 8 yeah we can be 9 or we can be 10 or 12 or 100 or a thousand right but we can also be 8.1 because 8.1 sits right there just off of 8 or I can be 8.01 or 8.0001 as long as I'm not exactly and that's what we're talking about when we look at these graphs of inequalities. All right, so that is how we graph them. In example two and example three, we're going to look at using the operations to solve the one-step inequality and get it graphed. So let's go ahead and look at those examples. So how do we solve inequalities? It's the same way that we solve equations. We're still using our order of operations, our PEMDAS, right? And remember, if our direction is to solve, we are undoing. And so with one-step inequalities, it's whatever step we need to do, right? If we see addition, we're going to undo it with subtraction. If we see division, we're going to undo it with multiplication. And so we're going to do those steps, and then we're going to graph these graphs up. And so in example 2a, x plus 8 is greater than or equal to negative 6. Again, you can put your line separating the left and right sides of this. 
so you know what's on what side. We can subtract the 8 from both sides, and so we get the x. The greater than or equal to symbol just comes right down, and then negative 6 minus 8 is negative 14. And so draw in our number line. Negative 14 is our critical value. That's what's in the middle. Negative 15 is to the left of that. And negative 13 is to the right. And so at negative 14, what am I going to put? Well, I've got the equal to bar, so we're going to put our dot. And then what is larger than negative 14? Is it negative 15 is greater than, put the right symbol here, greater than or equal to negative 14? Or is it that negative 13 is greater than or equal to negative 14? Which one makes sense? Well, again, as we get closer to zero, we're getting larger and larger numbers in the negatives. And so negative 13 is larger than negative 14. And so that would be our final answer. So when it says solve and graph, we've solved it. So that's this piece. And we've graphed it, showing it on the number line. Let's go ahead and look at example B. We've got x minus 10 is less than 8. X minus 10 is less than 8. And so again, we're going to take our steps and solve this. So we're going to add the 10 to both sides. And so X is less than 18. And so we're going to draw our number line. 18 in the middle. 17 to the left. 19 to the right. And so when we do that, at 18, what are we going to put? Well, it's not equal to, so we're going to put a circle. And what number makes sense? Is 17 less than 18? Or is 19 less than 18? Which one makes sense? 17 is less than 18. And so that's where we're going to shade. And I just want to point out at this point, you've seen me draw all of these on the number line itself. And again, some teachers put it above or below or something like that. The appropriate place to actually draw these graphs, these number lines, is on the number line itself. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that we're actually showing what values make sense. Um, it belongs on the number line itself, not above, not below, or anything else. Okay. All right, example C. I want you to take a second and, again, pause the video here to solve this one and try it on your own. So x plus 8 is greater than 5. So go ahead and pause the video now and solve this one out. All right, so if you work this one out, let's see what you got. So x plus 8 greater than uh, greater than 5, we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. So we get that x is greater than negative 3. And so draw our number line, negative 3. Negative 4 is to the left of that, negative 2 is to the right. At negative 3, what are we going to put? Well, it's a circle. And so we ask ourselves, negative 4, is that greater than negative 3? Or is negative 2 greater than negative 3? And again, negatives, our brain kind of flips on us. Negative 2 is larger than negative 3 because it's closer to 0. It's to the right of the other number, right? To be greater than a number, it has to be to the right of the previous number. All right, so that's addition and subtraction. Our rules are exactly the same. We're going to graph them like we've done, like we've done with other examples. There, there's nothing that changes in those questions. But with multiplication and division, there is a change. And so we're going to talk about that change next. So when we deal with multiplication or division, we must flip the inequality symbol when we multiply or divide both sides. I want you to underline, highlight, do something to those words both sides. Because the confusion comes on this step when we deal with a negative in the problem, and then the question is, do we flip it, do we not flip it? And that's what I want you all to understand. We flip the inequality symbol when we multiply or divide something to both sides. Not just because one number was negative. And that's what actually what we're going to see in example A here, is that we have 4x is greater than negative 36. And so when I go to solve this, I'm going to divide by the 4 and divide by the 4. And so what did I do to both sides? I divided by a positive 4. And so x is greater than, the sign is not going to flip. Again, what did I do to both sides? I divided by positive 4. It's not negative, so there's no flip involved. And so x is greater than negative 9. 
we can draw that number line. Negative 9, negative 10 is to the left, negative 8 is to the right. At negative 9, what are we going to have? We're going to have that circle. And again, what value is greater than negative 9? Is negative 10 greater than negative 9? Or is negative 8 greater than negative 9? Negative 8 is greater than negative 9, so that is the way we shade. Okay? So again, in that example, we saw that we divided both sides by a positive number, so we did not flip the inequality symbol. But look at example B. Negative 5x is less than or equal to 50. And so in this example, we're dividing both sides by negative 5. And so x, and we can do the 50 divided by negative 5, that's negative 10. But what do we do to both sides? We divided it by a negative. And so because we divided by a negative to both sides, we're going to be greater than or equal to the negative 10. And so we're going to graph this inequality. Negative 10, negative 11, negative 9. And so at negative 10, we're going to have our dot. And which value is greater than negative 10? So negative 11 greater than or equal to negative 10? Or is negative 9 greater than or equal to negative 10? It's the negative 9. And so we shade it that way. All right, in example C, we've got x over 4 is less than negative 8. So what are we going to do to both sides here? Again, we've got division, so to undo division, we're going to do multiplication. And so we're going to multiply, rewriting the problem here, we're going to multiply both sides by the 4. And so the 4s on the left side cancel, and so we get x is less than negative 32. Again, what do we do to both sides? We multiply, or yeah, we multiplied by a positive value, so we don't flip the inequality here. And so we're going to get negative 32 is in the middle, negative 33 is to the left, negative 31 is to the right. At negative 32, we're going to have a circle, and ask yourselves, which one is less than negative 32? Is negative 33 less than negative 32? Or is negative 31 less than negative 32? And negative 33 is less than the negative 32. All right, last example here. Example D. X over negative 3 is greater than or equal to negative 12. So what are we going to do here? What are we doing to both sides? Well, to get that X by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by the negative 3. And so multiplying both sides by negative 3, we get the x, we get a positive 36. But we've got to flip this inequality because we've multiplied both sides by a negative. And so we're going to get less than or equal to. And so 36 to the left is 35, to the right is 37. At 36, what are we going to put? It's equal to, so we're going to put our dot. And which one makes sense? Is 35 less than or equal to 36? Or is 37 less than or equal to 36? It's 35. So we're going to shade in the appropriate direction. And so that's it for this lesson. Again, the big things, two big things. Make sure you know how to graph. What are we putting? Are we putting a circle or a dot? Which way are we shading? Are we shading towards one value or another? And the second thing, remember that when we multiply or divide, both sides by a negative, we have to flip the inequality. It's the only time we do that. Any other time, the inequality stays exactly as it is. All right, that's it for this lesson. I hope you all have a good one, and I'll catch you all next time.